Hello and welcome to tutorial 132 in the series of programs and tutorials that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email list, then please go to markplex.com and sign up for the email list. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at how maybe we could use radar screen a little bit like a spreadsheet. After all, a radar screen looks very similar to a spreadsheet and you might think at first glance that you could simply click on a, a cell and type in something like equal sum and and so on and that would be really useful and maybe, who knows, that might be there one day. But I'm not sure we're there yet. Now what I'm going to do in this tutorial is a little example of how we could effectively add up the values in a column and uh, use that information. And what I've done, I've just set up this uh, little idea where we've got several currencies. First plot, what I've done is put the row number, which you might think is uh, not really worth doing, but you'll see why in a moment. The second one, what I've done is I'm calculating the slope over a very small number of bars. And what plot two does is it's displaying whether the slope is currently going down, up or whatever. And then what plot three is, it's determining based on all the different values of plot two, whether all of those are up. If they're up, this becomes true. And if any of them are down, it becomes false. So you can see at the moment we've got one up, but uh, that's not enough to generate a true in plot three. What we're waiting for is for all the values here in plot two to become up and then plot three will become true. So what I'm going to do is just take a little break here and uh, hopefully we'll see that happening. Sometimes it occurs a little too quickly to uh, to see, but let's just uh, let's just wait. Okay, so there you see, uh, you're, or you've just seen, all of the values are up and the values on the right are set to true. However, they're not because one of them was false. And the reason for that is that what we're doing here is we're, we're waiting for a particular symbol to uh, tick and the calculation to reoccur before the value of plot three is set to true. So it's it's doing a good job, I think, of sharing the information, but it's a little slow to update the update. And this is using the global um, variable, which is uh, an older technology now, but I think still a good one. So what I'm going to do is just show you how I wrote this. And then having done that, we're going to then go and we're going to do it again, but we're going to be using the newer global dictionary. Incidentally, the global dictionary only works in TradeStation. And in fact, what what um, what I'll probably do are two different videos. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just uh, ignore the variables for the moment and uh, we can work those out later. The first thing we want to know is what the row number is. And there's a very useful little function to do this called get app info, which has got a lot of options, one of which is AI row. So that will give us the integer number of the row on radar screen. The next thing we want to do is calculate the slope. Now, I don't think this has got any serious application. What I did is just use the uh, linear reg slope over two bars. So that's giving us a slope which goes from up to down to up to down uh, quite quite quickly on a, a one minute uh, chart or one minute row in radar screen. But what I'm saying is here that if the slope is greater than zero, I'm going to give another variable up, down, up, uh, UPDN a value of two and if it is less than zero I'm going to give UPDN a value of one and then we're just plotting the row number which uh, I mentioned and then we're plotting two and we're saying if UPDN is equal to two we're going to plot up if it's equal to one we're going to plot down and then we're setting the black the uh, the background color if it's two we're going to set it to green and if it's down if it's um uh, UPDN is equal to one, then we're going to set it to red. So, so far, so good. But what we're now going to do is for each row, and bearing in mind this program is applied effectively to each row on radar screen, like a, a think of it as a separate chart, but represented as values. We're going to store the value of UPDN in 
a global variable. Now, if you're not familiar, global variable DLL is something that's been available to TradeStation for some time. It's probably a little older now, but it's something which I think still works very well. You need to download the DLL. If you go to global variable DLL, if you search that on the forums, you'll be able to get the latest program. And uh, what I'm doing is storing into a fixed number, row number in this case, and I'm storing the value. There are other ways of using global variable and um, there is a, a good document that's included with it. Having done that, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the global variable and sum the values of all the UPDNs. So if you uh, go back to the chart, each one of these rows is set a UPDN, an up down. So for example, that's set um, when it's down, it's one, when it's up, it's two. And if you were to top those up, you're going to find that uh, if they're all up, the total of the five row or the uh, one, two, three, four, five rows is going to be 10. If they're all down, then the total of those five rows is going to be five. And we're going to use that to determine whether they're all up and then change plot three. So we do that by looking at GV get integers. There's two different things here. We're using set integer and get integer. So you'll need to look at the um, global variable dot DLL to understand that syntax. But we're saying if it's greater than zero, in other words, it's been set, then we're going to do the sum, which we're using row sum plus equals, which is exactly the same thing as saying row sum equals row sum plus, and then getting the value of the, um, the, the value that's been stored in the global variable. Then we're incrementing something called row counter, and we're going again through this while loop. And what will happen eventually, we'll increment the counter to such a point that the uh, there won't be a value in the get integer, or rather in the global variable, then it's going to return zero or minus one. Then the loop will stop. So when we've been through all the values in the global variable, we've then got a value of the sum of all those UPDN values. And as I mentioned, if they, in this case, are equal to 10, which is going to be the value of the row counter minus one times two, and uh, if that's equal to row sum, in other words, if this value here would be 10 in this particular case with five rows, if that's equal to row sum, which is the sum of the values in the global variable, then we know that all of them are up in this case. And so we're going to plot true with a magenta background. And uh, if not, we're going to plot false. Now, the problem with this, as we've already discovered, is that it's really relying on the individual the individual symbols to tick. So we can get a situation where the individuals don't tick, as you can just see there, and therefore the result is a little bit uh, confusing, particularly if we were using this on a very large number of symbols. If they were very slow ticking and they, they all ticked sort of synchronously, it would be okay, but in this particular case, not so much. So what I'm gonna do in a second video, we're gonna be doing essentially exactly the same thing, but we're gonna be using the global dictionary. Okay, so uh, if you're interested in that second video, I'll put a link to it here and um, also links to other programs and tutorials. Anyway, hope, uh, hope you found this useful so far.